Hey everyone, I'm Andrew, and we're finally back with some more cutscene. Yay! <laughs> Our last few episodes have focused on some of the worst video game movies ever made, but today I want to touch on one of the better ones, 2006's Silent Hill. Konami survival horror classic made for a better movie than most, and for a while, it actually gave us hope that films based on games could break the curse. Sure, it was never gonna win any awards, but there are a few factors that put Silent Hill a cut above the crap. So today, I wanna talk about why the Silent Hill movie works. First things first, they took it seriously. Hollywood still hasn't figured out video game movies, but as much as modern attempts like Tomb Raider or Assassin's Creed failed to start a revolution, things aren't nearly as bad as they were in the mid-2000s. Did you have a nightmare? After surviving the first wave of awful 90s adaptations, we all thought whatever's next can't be nearly as bad as Street Fighter. Minutes, things can't get worse. wrong, it got worse. But instead of improving, it seems like game movies just got even worse. Hey, cut it out. It's your fault. The only series to get any traction was Resident Evil, and Hollywood seemed to take the wrong lessons from Paul W.S. Anderson's never-ending franchise. The films that followed tended to be CGI slogs where scantily clad heroines Matrix kicked their way across your beloved childhood games. <laughs> But Silent Hill tried to do something a little different. It's a slow, somber film that tries to emulate the same movies that inspired the games in the first place. From the small town surrealism of David Lynch to the trippy terror of Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> Silent Hill was directed by Christoph Gantz, the man behind Brotherhood of the Wolf, with a screenplay by Pulp Fiction co-writer Roger Avery. Not exactly Scorsese, but hey, this movie came out during the reign of Juve Bowl. Basically, my message is, fuck yourself. So I can appreciate people behind the camera who A, have actually made decent movies, and B, don't have the utmost contempt for the source material. Bowl, I'm Vince Desi. What the fuck you do to my game Postal? I don't know what your problem is. The movie's great. Both filmmakers were huge fans of the Silent Hill games. Gans had actually lobbied Konami for five years trying to get the movie made, and once he finally got that sweet, sweet green light, he wanted to make it work. It's something frightening, it's something disturbing, it's something very beautiful. It's not only about fear, it's about emotion. There is not so many games that make you cry. It's not a perfect transition from console to screen, as most of these movies tend to be, but the Silent Hill movie succeeds because it respects the source material. The Silent Hill games are steeped in esoteric lore involving cults, killers, alternate dimensions, and omnipotent dogs in flying saucers. Some reason. <laughs> There are eight main games in the franchise, a lot of which barely connect to each other, especially once Konami started farming the series out to Western developers. The movie uses Silent Hill 1 as a starting point, and besides gender swapping the protagonist Harry Mason, it sticks reasonably close to the basic plot. A girl named Alessa was burned as a witch by a cult, unleashing her psychic powers to split the town into separate supernatural dimensions. Rose brings her daughter Sharon to Silent Hill in search of answers and, spoiler, discovers that her child is the reincarnation of Alessa's essence. Where's my child? She's not your child. She's hers. The little girl is what's left of her goodness. Again, it's not one-to-one -one with the original, but it's damn close enough, and the movie more than makes up for the differences with its excellent renditions of Silent Hill's trademark monsters. From the bubblehead nurses to the lying figures, the movie perfectly captures the inhuman horror of the original designs, with, by the way, a bare minimum of CGI. Every creature in the film was made with practical effects, using camera tricks like running the film backwards, with performances from dancers and contortionists to give them that otherworldly eeriness. Most of the monsters come from the legendary Silent Hill 2, which actually doesn't have a ton to do with the first game. For example, the Red Pyramid, or Pyramid Head, is a manifestation of James Sunderland's psyche in Silent Hill 2. He's not connected to Alessa, or the cults, or any of the larger Silent Hill mythos, really, but he's become the series' mascot. And the movie just 
wouldn't have felt right without the big guy literally ripping someone's skull. Just like Velcro, just. You can even hear the film's reference for the series. Since, aside from one Johnny Cash song, every note in the score comes from Akira Yamaoka's original music from the games. Now, don't get me wrong, there are major, major differences between the games and the movie, but that's part of why the film works. They added their own spin. Like Springfield, the true location of Silent Hill is shrouded in mystery, although the games eventually placed it somewhere in Maine. For the movie, Gauntz and Avery moved the fictional town to West Virginia, and based it on the real-life tragedy of Centralia, Pennsylvania. In 1962, a fire erupted in the coal mine beneath the town, and with no way of putting it out, it's predicted to burn for the next 250 years. The town was condemned, its zip code erased, and today there's nothing left but condemned buildings, seven very stubborn residents, and a toxic smoke that seeps from the ground and shrouds the town in a sickly fog. Yes, this place exists. It's the perfect representation of the misty world of Silent Hill, sandwiched between our reality and the dark world that lurks just below serious Stranger Things vibes. It might not jibe with the game canon, but it's a great twist on the concept and an awesome way to represent the lonesome, desolate fog that, let's face it, was more a product of the PS1's crappy draw distance than anything else. The most immediately apparent change from the games is the gender of its main character. Originally, Gons and Avery wanted the film to exclusively feature women. They never found Harry Mason's devotion to his daughter convincing and wanted to focus the movie around the bond between a mother and her child. That's a fairly big component of the Silent Hill lore, and today it would have probably been applauded as a bold, progressive casting choice. But all the way back in 2006, studios weren't quite so receptive, and they forced Gons to cram in extra scenes with Sean Bean and a cop. It's the most obvious reshoot since Kate Mara's wig in Fantastic Four. Bean feels like he's in a completely different movie, and they didn't even bother to film a scene where he dies. And he survives in the sequel too, which I mean, good for him. Sean Bean usually dies in everything he's in. But whatever happens, he'll never go there. Honestly, it's surprising he was even in Silent Hill Revelations. The sequel tries to stick much closer to the game canon, particularly Silent Hill 3. But in doing so, the movie becomes basically incompatible with the film it's a sequel to. It ignores the merger of Sharon and Dark Alessa. It changes the cult's entire belief system and awkwardly changes the main characters' names to make them Heather and Harry Mason from the games. I was Sharon, then Mary, then Kathy. Oh, Heather. You were Christopher and now you're Harry. Names don't matter. It was a commendable effort, but even Jon Snow couldn't save this movie. Yes, that's Kit Harington, and yes, that's one of his first roles in America. You know what? I'm lost. I can't find math. And without the subtlety and atmosphere of the first film, Revelations is bogged down by a baffling story, bad acting, and even worse, CGI. It failed to live up to the high bar set by its predecessor and killed any hopes of a Silent Hill film franchise. Of course, Silent Hill fans have a lot more to worry about than just the movies. Given what happened with Hideo Kojima's PT, we may never see a new Silent Hill game again either. But hey, Capcom announced a new Mega Man game after we did our videos, so who knows? Simon Belmont is in Smash after all, so Konami hasn't completely forgotten about their video game past. But even if the series is dead forever, at least we'll have the Silent Hill film as proof that video game movies don't always have to suck. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. It's been a while since our last cutscene, and we wanted to go a little bit more positive for this one since we've been shitting on a lot of video game movies. We'd love to do more, so I want to know what game movies do you think we should cover in the future? Do you want to see Prince of Persia, Double Dragon, Max Payne? Leave us a comment, let me know, and please subscribe to Now This Nerd.